Hello everyone, welcome to this session. I'm Sharon Omoza from Nairobi, Kenya. Uh, the session is on new on uh, news from OSM to PGSQL by ON Top. The talk will take 20 minutes, including the Q&A session. Welcome to my talk about uh, news from OSM to PGSQL. OSM to PGSQL is a program to import OSM data into a Postgres PostGIS database and then do something with it. Um, the something can be rendering raster tiles or vector tiles or building your maps with uh, maps with QGIS, do geospatial anal analysis, maybe exporting the data into lots of different other formats. Uh, there's many use uses, and I'm not going to talk about uh, that part of the picture. I'm going to talk about uh, the import part. Best uh, known applications are probably the uh, OSM standard map, the OSM cartel map that you see when you go to OpenStreetMap.org um, or the search function on OpenStreetMap.org run um, by a Nominatim. Uh, the Nominatim software also uses OSM to PGC call in the background uh, to import um, its data. Um, OSM to PGC call has been around since 2006 and has had several maintainers and developers over the years. Um, first written in C, it was later uh, moved over to C++ and uh, has been extended again and again over the years. Uh, I'm active in OSM to PGC call development uh, since the end of 2019. Uh, and uh, uh, a, lot, a big part of that uh, work that I've been doing had, has been paid uh, by these people, the Thunder Forest and uh, Geofabric uh, companies, uh, and also the OpenStreetMap Foundation uh, made it possible for me to work uh, to, to, to work on OSM to PGP SQL and spend a lot of time there and, and uh, do a lot of uh, uh, work that couldn't have been done with, without that support. Um, the program runs on Linux, on Windows, on Mac OS, um, and uh, can read any OSM data format. Geometries uh, can be in any projection, um, typically the um, Mercado projection for tiles, but you can use any other projection also. Um, it makes sure, uh, sure uh, geometries are always valid. That's very important for uh, working uh, with the geometries. And it scales from small extracts of uh, your city or something to the whole planet, uh, even on reasonably small machines. Um, and you can keep a database up to date using the changes from um, OSM uh, so that you don't have to re-import again and again. So what's new? Uh, first, uh, there is the osm 2 .org website, uh, which I've created. Um, so now, um, after many years of uh, where the documentation uh, was just in pieces here and there on the wiki uh, and all that, we have one place for the documentation, uh, which is quite extensive. Um, we have an FAQ, we have examples, uh, we have instruction how to get help, uh, a new section and all of that. Um, uh, like any open source project, uh, I guess. Um, so have a look at awesome to pgc .org and um, uh, and and you, you'll, you'll find up to date information there about the project. Um, I'm talking here about the version 1.5, which was released in June of this year. Um, all right, so typical use cases um, for um, the program are either the one-off import where you want to uh, import maybe the data from uh, for your city or country uh, or maybe uh, just the shops in your area or something like that. Um, you import the data once, you do something with it, you do some kind of analysis, you uh, create an ad hoc map or something and then uh, the, the project is finished and you're done. That's sort of one typical use case and the other typical use case is that you import data often for the whole planet, um, uh, but not necessarily so, and then update it regularly uh, to create an um, extensive map from it. You can do the updates with the changes from OSM to PGC, uh, of OpenStreetMap.org or from uh, extracts uh, like uh, Geofabric uh, also offers changes. Um, and um, 
those two use cases and everything in between are all well supported by us into PG SQL. And it, it is one of the things that's, that's difficult when developing uh, the program is uh, to make sure that all these use cases work uh, and are uh, performant and all that. Um, for the first use case, um, there's an interesting development. Uh, we need far less memory than we uh, used before. Uh, the rule of thumb is now about 2.5 times the a planet file size, a PDF file size that, that you're importing, um, uh, which means you can easily import whole countries um, in just a few minutes maybe or hours because it doesn't have to be uh, written to disk anymore in, in, that, in that use case. Um, here's an example. Um, let's say you want to create a map of all the railway lines in the world um, uh, that, that are an open street map. Um, you can uh, use Osmium uh, with the, the tax filler command of, of Osmium to first filter out from the planet file all the railway files that can be done in five or ten minutes. Uh, and then yours uh, and to PG SQL to import the data into the database and that just needs one or two minutes. So in uh, maybe ten minutes you can import um, all the railways of the world and you probably need eight gigabytes for that because um, the, the database also needs some 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 uh, memory but you can comfortably do that in eight gigabytes of RAM. So that makes um, OSM to PTC call interesting for these kind of small use cases. For the large use case where you want to import the data and update the data is also uh, much easier now that we have a script, a Python script that comes with OS into PG SQL. It's called OS into PG SQL dash replication. And you can initialize it once when you do the first import and then you run it once a minute or once a day or once an hour uh, with uh, the update command OS into PG SQL dash replication update. And that then internally calls, uh, downloads the, the updates from uh, the uh, OSMR website uh, and calls awesome to PGC com append to update your database. So you don't need osmosis anymore or um, some of these programs, uh, but can do this easily or more easily. Um, keeping the planet up to date is totally feasible on reasonable machines. Um, you probably uh, will have no fun with less than 64 gigabytes of RAM if you want to do that with the planet, uh, but 64 gigabytes of RAM definitely work. Um, it work, works, will work better and faster with 128. Now, the first import can be done in something like 12 hours. Uh, and after that, the minute the updates can be done in seconds. Other improvements are the log output. So everything the, the program prints out while it runs, um, that's easier to understand now. Um, you can decide how much output you want. What do you want the program to be quiet or uh, more verbose? Uh, and all these kind of things. Um, with the input, there's also some changes. We don't allow negative IDs anymore, uh, and uh, the objects in the file must be sorted. Um, that is the case for almost all the OSM files you'll you'll find out there. Um, so all the files you uh, download from Planet OSM org or the um, uh, typical extracts, they are all conforming to that. Um, this, this, but this restriction allowed us to do a lot of um, performance improvements. So that's that's why we took uh, did that. If you um, have negative ideas, use Osmium Renumber. If your objects in your file are not sorted, use Osmium Sort um, before running OS into PG SQL. So you can still do those things, and you can do um, uh, large IDs outside the normal OSM ID space. Um, so if you uh, Create OSM data, create non-OSM data in OSM data formats. You can come up with your own IDs outside the range used by OSM data, and um, and OSM to PG SQL will work with that. Um, also, we now allow multiple files to be imported in one go. This sort of have worked sometimes with older versions of OSM to PG SQL, but in newer versions, this is officially supported and does always work. Um, so if you have a file with US, uh, um, US data and with the Canadian data, you can just put them both in the command line that will be imported together. Um, the main improvements are in the outputs, though. 
uh, outputs decide um, how exactly the data is imported into the uh, database. Um, and uh, the classical output is the PG SQL, so-called PG SQL output. That's what most of you have been using all this time. Um, the uh, gazetteer output is specialized for nominating, so for the geocoder, uh, um, and it's only used for that. The multi-output uh, was an experiment to do a more flexible output, but it was never really used by anybody, so we, we, we removed it in, in uh, this version. Um, and the new hotness is the flex output, uh, which I'm going to talk about now, um, which makes um, uh, the OSM to VGC call much more flexible and, and usable in many more use cases. So the PGC call output was always very limited. You only had the four tables, the plant OSM in point, line, polygon, and roads tables. And you had lots of command line options, but still the um, what, what you can um, decide where something would go was, was very limited. And the result of that was then um, in your style sheets, when you do the rendering, you had this huge um, SQL um, select statements to get the data out. And um, so this is an example from the OSM Cutter style. And this one query goes on and on and on for pages and pages and pages. And there's um, dozens, if not hundreds of those uh, kind of queries in, th queries in there, uh, which make it very difficult to work uh, with the OSM data imported with uh, the PG SQL backend. With the flex output, this becomes a lot easier um, because we are using uh, the Lua um, programming language uh, as a configuration file, which allows us uh, while importing the data into the database to do all sorts of um, uh, things with the data to clean it up, um, to convert it to the right format uh, that we want and all that. Um, so basically what we want to do is we want to get the round data from OSM into the square form that it's needed in the database. And um, uh, that's, that's what the flex output is doing. It takes the tags on the one side and converts it into uh, tables and columns in those uh, tables. Um, it's not only one table, but as many tables as you want to. So that's that's the first job of, of the flex backend uh, on in the config file that uh, of that flex app backend. We have to define the tables. Which tables all, uh, do we want? How are they called? Which columns do they uh, should they have and what data types should those columns have? So the, here's an example of how this could look. Um, we define a white table, uh, so a table that's going to be created out of uh, was MV data um, here for the highways um, with a name type one way max speed and geometry column. I'm not going to go into all the details what what all of this means here, just to get give you an idea how this looks. Um, the second job that the config file has to do is it has to filter the data. So we have to decide which data do we actually need uh, and, in, and where should it go. Um, this we do by defining three functions called process node, process y, and process relation, which take an object uh, and uh, can then import the data from this object into uh, different tables. So. In this example, we might have a process wave function taking this object. And when the object has a highway tag, then we import it in the highways table that we have defined earlier uh, with the add row function. Um, the third um, thing we have to do is map the tags that we get uh, into a suitable format uh, for the database. Um, so continuing with that example, we take the uh, name tag and put it in the name column. We take, take the highway tag and put it in the type column. And we take the one-way tag and put it in the one-way column. Um, or if there's no one-way tag, we want to have a zero in the one-way column in this case. With the max speed tag, it's a bit special. Max speed can have the speed in kilometers per hour or miles per hour, for instance. And we want to um, convert all of this into just one number that's easy to use and the database, so we write a function called speed in this case that will do the conversion for us. And I'm not going to show you how this function uh, will look like. 
but that's something that you can provide these kind of functions um, to uh, do the data conversion in, in a way that, that suits your needs. Um, also, uh, what you should always um, make sure is that you clean up the data. Always in data is not perfect. There's all sorts of problems with it. Um, so uh, you can check here, is the data plausible? Um, and uh, only import good data into your database so that, that you don't have to worry later. Um, this is an example that you might have remembered from last year when Microsoft um, released the new version of the flight simulator and there was a building in there with 212 stories um, because uh, somebody had mistakenly um, put 212 stories on that building in the OSM data. And you want to avoid these kind of things, of course. The new FlexPack can also support something called two-stage processing. This is used for uh, getting tags from OSM relations to the way geometries. Uh, the typical use cases are rendering highway shields or bus routes or hiking routes, anything where data from relations uh, needs to be um, uh, on, the, on the ways uh, for proper rendering. So you combine the geometry from the ways with the tags from the relations. Um, and this is done by basically processing the data twice. Um, that's why it's called two-stage uh, processing. Um, so what's next? Um, OpenStreetMap, uh, OSM to PGC core, uh, should always be a stable platform. We want uh, that your configuration, that your scripts from yesterday still work today. So we're making pretty sure that we stay as compatible as possible. Um, that being said, uh, the, the flex output is the future and um, you should uh, look into it and uh, uh, start moving over. Um, there's lots of example config files uh, in the OSM to PGC uh, distribu distribution. There's also examples on the web page that show you um, uh, how, uh, how you can use the, the flex backend. Um, so, so try it out and, and move it out. A new feature over, um, new features will uh, uh, mostly only be available in the Flex backend and not in the PG SQL output. Um, we are also looking at um, improving the geometry processing feature. So at the moment, uh, OSM to PG SQL can uh, create, uh, of course, point, line, and polygon features. It assembles multi polygons as, uh, as always. Um, from the relations, um, but it can't, for instance, it can't, for instance, do um, simplifications of geometries. That is something that you have to add on. Um, and this, this can be done with triggers and all that, um, but it's certainly something that we would like to uh, make easier um, for, for, for the users. There's also still performance improvements that can be done, um, in, uh, in spe especially the data caching for uh, the use case where you want to have an updatable database, um, we are thinking about in improving that and uh, have have done some work already. Also, the tile expiry needs uh, 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 some work um, to make tile expiry more flexible, especially so it works better with uh, the flex back end. And um, oh, we are planning to work on that also. How much we are going to have fast? All oh, this is coming depends on how much time there is and how much funding there is. Um, so uh, I encourage you to, um, uh, if, if you are a big uh, awesome to PG SQL user, please support uh, development uh, of uh, the software. Thanks very much. And uh, are there any questions? Thank you, Wohen, for, for the talk and the amazing insights. We will jump straight to the Q&A session. Uh, we have three questions here. Uh, I'll start with the first question. Um, are there any Easter eggs in OSM to PGSQL? Well, there wouldn't be good Easter eggs if I would tell you. Uh, so uh, maybe uh, you should uh, check that out and uh, look at the code. And maybe you'll find something. Who knows? OK. Uh, the next question here is, um, are there Docker containers to easily deploy OSM to PGSQL with updates uh, like there is for Overpass? Um, 
I'm not sure. I, we don't have an official Docker container or something like that. Um, there's probably lots of uh, people who have done uh, Docker containers, but that's um, none of the um, none of the uh, to PGC call um, uh, developers use Docker, so um, uh, we wouldn't be able to to provide a good good image there. If uh, the community wants to supply some, uh, please do that. Put that. Um, somewhere, but from my point of view, uh, Docker um, is is just one way of many how to deploy it, and everybody has their favorite. And we are not creating packages um, neither in Docker nor any other things. If you want to, uh, the easiest way to deploy those into PG SQL is uh, using a Debian um, uh, based uh, a Linux distribution, and uh, the backports are always very very uh, current, so you get the current version of or send to PG SQL there and can install that either um, on your uh, system or or in your Docker container and and uh, and uh, that gets you running pretty quickly. I'm great. The other question is uh, OSM to PG SQL cannot import historical data. Is there any good way to work with history data? Um, yeah, it's it's uh, it's correct that um, we don't support uh, history data or we can't uh, import history data. Um, there there is this awesome platform from the Heidelberg Institute of uh, uh, Technology. Um, I posted the link in in the chat. That seems to be a software that's directed at working with um, um, historical uh, data and OSM. I've never tested it myself, but that's um, something you could check out. Uh, our last question is OSM to PGSQL can do root shield for roads. Will OSM cattle be showing them? Um, that's not really a question for me because I'm not um, an OSM cattle developer. I um, know that um, OSM, uh, that, that, that Paul Norman um, has ported. Uh, the OSM Kato stuff to the flex output from the original PG SQL output. And so that's certainly something that people are working on in some way or form, but uh, it'll probably take a while from what I've uh, seen. And But that's really a, a, a question that the um, Kato developers have, have to answer. In, in theory, so te technology-wise, it should be possible to do that uh, with uh, with the new um, flex backend. Thank you, Ohen. Uh, that's the end of our questions.